walks. 33, 33 strikeouts on the season, 19 walks issued so far, and we are underway. This ball game moved up an hour and a half simply because of the cold weather that moved in yesterday, dropped the temperatures about 20 degrees, and they decided they wanted to play in a little more sunlight here this afternoon. And the second pitch, a ball. Two balls, no strikes to the hitter in Crayville. In the third baseman is the 2-0, and that's in there for a called strike. Out of Lee Summit, Missouri. Senior, batting 261. One home run out of that leadoff spot on the season. And fouls that one back. Count evens a 2-2. Two two. You were in Provo, and I got a chance to talk to Kenny Gajewski. That's a new team to the Big 12, so haven't seen or know a lot about that BYU program, but he said the facilities were outstanding, and it is a really good atmosphere in Provo. Exactly. It was a beautiful stadium, and... Just being out there in the mountains, it was so much fun, and getting to play at a new spot is always a good thing. So good to uh, also take the series, luckily. Well, that's the other thing, right? Go out there and take care of business. Now, I know Coach G wanted to get the, the sweep, but that is so hard to do, and he said that is truly a tough place to play. And there's a third strike call, and strikeout number one on the day for Kyra Aycock. And let's read Schneidbiller, and again in the circle. There's Kyra Aycock, and she starts with a strike here to the center fielder. Out of Ozark, Missouri, Abby Ford, a sophomore batting 304 this season. The 01 is chopped foul. And that'll be strike two. That ball was. Picked up by the coach, Casey Griffith, I believe, over there, the associate head coach, who will be taking over this program next season for Coach Hesse. We'll tell you more about that throughout our broadcast. Here's the 0-2. That one just misses inside. Cowgirls have played three Big 12 series, a huge one coming up this weekend, Thursday, Friday, Saturday against Texas. And you know, we talked about it, though. You, you know, it's one thing to say we take them one game at a time. But Kenny G will tell you that. If you try to talk to him about Texas today, he will tell you the next game is the most important game, and that is Missouri State. I don't want to go any further than that. And he does a good job of keeping this team in the moment, it, so it would seem. That's so true. That's one of his biggest messages, I think, coming into the game today for his team is to just focus on Missouri State and knowing that they're going to come in here and give you a tough game and do their best. And some of those midweeks really cause trouble for the Oklahoma State Cowgirls. Yeah, so last important. week against Tulsa, and he, he said, I do not know what it is, but we just don't play well against Tulsa. When we're playing really, really well and maybe they're down, we still don't play well. And when we play extreme, when they maybe we're even, we still don't play well. He was not happy with that performance, certainly. Here's the... Okay, so they called Abby Ford out. They called it a bunt, and it went foul, so it was an out, and that brings up Kayla Ulrich, the first baseman. She was trying to slap it, and I guess technically again they call that a bunt, and as such, she was out. The only other thing I could think is maybe she stepped out of the box, and if you step out of the box and make contact, then you're out. There's another strikeout as Ulrich goes down. Swing standing season. We'll let you know about the young lady in the circle here in just a moment. First pitch is a cold ball as Shelby Hooley has only pitched eight and a third and as a senior hasn't really had a lot of opportunities this year. Yeah, we talked to Coach Hesse kind of about the plan for this game, and she said she's going to try to get all of her pitchers some innings. And even though Hooley has only started a couple of games for the Bears this season, um, I think it's just going to be a new look today for them. Going to give a lot of different kids. She said as Rosie Davis steps in, batting 397, she told us that 
You know, this game, every midweek game, and obviously even though it's against a top-ranked Oklahoma State team, is about getting us prepared for our weekend series in the Missouri Valley. And as such, he said, you can anticipate we're going to ask each of our pitchers to go get six outs, right, and just go do their job. So expecting to see a few pitchers today for Missouri State. And the count will go to three and one to Davis, who leads this Cowgirl team in batting average. She has, for a freshman, Coach G told me, in fact, earlier today that I'm a little surprised that her offense has come on this quickly. He said, from the time I've recruited her to where she is now, that jump has been really, really big. He goes, I don't know that I foresaw her leading this team this early on. She's made such a huge impact so far in the lineup. And not only does she get on base and just hit for high average, but she also hits with power as well. And to see that as a freshman is very impressive. And she's going to get additional average. And she's going to turn that into a double. Rounds first in there standing up. A full count hit into the gap in right center. And Rosie Davis has a double for Oklahoma State. Let's take a look. Yes, yeah, so this pitch, I think just a little too over the middle. It's down in the zone. So Rosie Davis is a really good job waiting back on that pitch and driving it the opposite way. Really good at bat by her too, to work it to a 3-2 and then hit a double. So the Cowgirls start the ball game off with a standing double by the second baseman and that'll bring up the third baseman for the Oklahoma State Cowgirls out of Moss Bluff, Louisiana. Julian Poulard, the senior, batting 313 with a couple of home runs, 11 RBI on the season. And Shipman wants to come out and talk to who Bears? Missouri State Bears, excuse me. Count goes to 2-0 and for Poulard. I think 294 with runners in scoring position, and that's what the Cowgirls have right out of the gate. Here's the 2-0 chopped down the first base side. It'll move the runner over, but Pillard will ground out the first, and there's one down in the bottom of the first. Little different today. The wind is not blowing left to right or out like we're so used to seeing today. It's blowing from left field to right. And it's not typical here at Cowgirl Stadium to see the wind go in that direction. Yeah, we usually see a lot of balls go out right towards left center, and that's where the wind usually is, go is going, but kind of the opposite today. So we'll see if that changes some of the home runs. Changes maybe some of the power and how people are going to be going. Yeah, that flag is usually going the opposite direction. We caught it in a weak moment, too, because it has, it has been whipping pretty good there in left to right as Carly Godwin, the first baseman behind here, 0-1 with a runner at third. Ooh, take strike two. As an infielder, wind direction, wind speed matter much to you? Definitely not as much as it does for the outfielders, but we still get some fly balls every now and again, so something to keep in mind, but I don't think we really consider it as much since we usually get ground balls in the infield. Balls to uh, you so quickly doesn't tail off. Mm -hmm. As you will, we'll see it when the ball's in the air, like this one is telling off to the right, and coming up a little bit too far is Mueller. The Cowgirls will able to tag Davis in for a run, and the Cowgirls have a 1-0 lead with two gone in the bottom of the first. That's just a great display of team offense, I think, with Rosie Davis starting out with a double, and then Jillian Poulard able to move her over to third with a ground ball, and then the sack fly to bring her in. It's just a good job of passing the bat to bring in a run. Sack fly RBI for Carly Godwin, and... The Cowgirls have the early 1-0 lead. Cowgirls have been a team that has scored first most of the year. They have jumped out, especially at home this season. They have jumped on top of their, their opponents all season long, part of the reason why the Cowgirls undefeated at home. Here's a good look at Caroline Wong, the right fielder today. Normally the catcher, Schneidbiller, is catching today, so Wong is playing in right field. 
pretty good versatility to go from catcher to right fielder, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, also a good day, I think, just to give her legs some rest. I'm sure she's going to be back behind the plate on Thursday, so might as well get her some reps out in right field. Yeah, the Big 12 moves the Easter weekend series. Instead of Friday, Saturday, Sunday, move them up a day to Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And so the Cowgirls will be in action in just two days. There's a swing and a miss by Wong, and count evens at two and two. Wong batting 362 on the season. This is her 95th at bat on the year. Fouled right back into the top of the net. And the Cattle stay two and two. A double. Poulard moving the runner over. And a sack fly, giving the Cowgirls the early 1 0 lead. That one missed high at the out of the zone. And Wong now works the count full. Lots of action and uh, volume coming out of the Cowgirl locker room right now. That one is hit hard into the gap. And line drive off the wall. Wong is going to be held to a long single. Man, just a little more loft, and that one was going to be out of here. Exactly. Another great at bat from the Cowgirls offense here. Caroline Wong takes this upper pitch on the outer half and drives it exactly where it came from um, into the right center gap. And credit to the right fielder there, Annie Mueller, getting that ball in quickly and keeping Caroline Wong at first base. Tell you what, interesting, Hooley literally put her hands up into complete defensive posture. I think she thought that ball was coming right back at her and was trying to do everything to get out of the way. That's how hard that ball was hit. It came so low past her and it was a line drive all the way out as Claire Tim, the sophomore batting 387, steps in for Oklahoma State. The center fielder today. And she starts ahead 1-0. That went off the plate for a 2-0 count. Yeah, Missouri State has been a very good midweek opponent, coming off a tremendous year. Last year, undefeated at home. First time in program history they were able to do that. But a little bit of a struggle this year. They've had some injuries, and they've lost it. They're down a hitter. They're down a, a pitcher. And Coach Hesse told us it's kind of taken its toll on this team this year. Yeah, I think it's definitely tough when one of your best players is out for the season. You kind of have to just battle through missing such a key role in the lineup. And they've also played such a tough schedule so far this year, so you know they're battle-tested and going to be ready to give any opponent a run for their money. Kinsey Vaughn being that player out for the year, and she was outstanding a year ago. Fantastic hitter and a pitcher, and so as you said, just got to got to fight through it. Missouri State's trying to do that. Here's the three-one. That one is hit back up the middle as Girardi is able to come over. She's in for it being hard to kind of pass over the reins, but she has definitely built a legacy and shaped this Missouri State program. So congrats to an incredible career for her. No doubt, wants to go out the right way. Winning against Oklahoma State would be a lot of fun. Had, had a, just a terrific conversation with Coach Hesse as that one is in there for a called strike to Andy Mueller, the right fielder. But I asked her about what she remembers about playing here. And she said, you know, back in 98, we were here in a preseason tournament, and we weren't very good. And Sandy Fisher said, we'll see you in a regional later. And she said, uh, I don't think so. She showed back up in a regional with Florida State, Stanford, Oklahoma State. And she said they actually beat uh, Stanford in that regional. She said one of the highlights of biggest wins of their career. So it's kind of awesome to think about that she was, she remembers Sandy Fisher and, and the time here. and just uh, has been a big part of that for a lot of years. So she's always enjoyed playing in Stillwater. Yeah, exactly. And thinking about that regional with Stanford, Florida State, and Oklahoma State, I don't think we'll ever see that again. Um, <laughs> so pretty amazing for them to, you know, take down such good competition and get a win in that regional. And, you know, and yet you're looking at the College World Series in Oklahoma City. 
Um, those are a lot of still the same staples, right? I mean, yeah. you get Florida State, Oklahoma State, Stanford. I mean, uh, a lot of the same repeat offenders down there in Oklahoma City, and that's exactly where both of these two teams would like to be. That one is hit sharply into left field. In the gap, that's going to be a double for Mueller, and that's a nice little hit off of Kyra Aycock for the double. Let's take another look at this one. I mean, she, she drove this one solidly. Yeah, this pitch, I think just too much over the heart of the plate, a little down in the zone. So she does a good job going down and driving that pitch into left center. And I really also think the wind kind of kept that ball from really smoking it off the wall because she got a solid barrel on that. Going back to what we talked about, the wind blowing the other direction, that ball is probably out by a good distance. But with the opposite direction wind, maybe did hold it in the park. And that's a good thing for Oklahoma State, not so much for the Bears. But a double to lead things off here in the top of the second. And Kyra Aycock comes right back with a strike to the designated player, Alex, uh, Alexis Perales, the freshman out of Grapevine, Texas, batting 400 on the season. Right back to Aycock under her glove. Bloodworth over, makes the throw, but not in time. And let's see if they will review this or if they will leave it intact. Don't see anybody jumping out for Oklahoma State to say review it. Megan Bloodworth, I think, does a really good job just getting to this ball and, you know, getting her hips in a good position to throw over to first base. It's pretty close over there, but that's a really tough play. And I think a good job by her keeping that ball in the infield and preventing uh, Mueller from possibly scoring on that. Double followed by a single. Now runners on the corners for Missouri State. And you got the youngster in Schneidmiller behind the, the plate now in this situation. And let's see if they go to small ball or if they're going to let her swing away here for Ellie McCoy, the senior out of Hastings, Nebraska. Heading 182. And she takes strike one to even the count at one and one. Going back to Coach Hesse, though, you know, I just thought it, it was just refreshing. You know, she, she said you have to change with the players to be relatable and i got the sense from you uh, from her and I, I don't know if maybe you did as well but that she has changed and she's okay with changing and she's been able to stay relevant with her players despite her long tenure at 36 years in that dugout and has done so by being willing to change so something that she's obviously accepted very very well yeah, it was cool to hear how, you know, from her perspective, the game and the players, just the personality, the new generation coming in has changed and how, you know, the players want more of a say and they're more willing to kind of, you know, voice their opinion on things and how she's sort of just had to adapt to that. McCoy hit by pitch and the bases are now loaded up as Schneidmiller will come out to talk to Kyra Aycock and... Cowgirls in a little bit of a jam right here. Got a little bit of a conversation going on. Let's see where this hit her. Uh, squarely in the back of the knee, and there was no getting away from that one. So the bases are loaded for Missouri State, trying to do some damage here at the top of the second. I don't know if it'll be our final thought on Coach Hesse or not, but I also think, listening to her talk, she had two very long-time assistants that were with her and when they stepped down and now you've got new new coaches she said I'm going to stay around and help the new Nick new coach come in and get settled but I think that takes its toll too when you get a comfort zone when you have your staff around you as long as she did probably that was also takes a little bit of a toll I also thought it was cool how she said that you know the plan was for her to kind of stick around for a couple of years and you know get some new play or sorry some new coaches in to you know kind of facilitate them taking over and making sure that it's a smooth transition for the players. So I think really cool for her to be able to stay and help the new coaches come in and take over the program. And that being the new coach right there at third, Coach Casey Griffith. Is that what is hit back to Kyra Aycock? Shipman will be reach on a fielder's choice. They are out at home, and there's the first out. Base is still loaded, but one gone now for Oklahoma State. Yeah, that was that was Coach uh, Casey Griffith over there up third, and she's been in the Missouri Valley. Was at Drake for 10 years, been in the Valley now for 12, and 
Coach wanted to make sure it was in good hands. And tell she felt good about that is Derry Berry will step in and she is in a good spot right now with her team. Bases loaded, only one gone. Pitch outside. Terry Berry. Out of Bentonville, Arkansas, Junior. Here's the 1 0. That one misses. Count goes to 2 0. So Kyrie didn't have a, her best outing at BYU and, and in trouble here early. And you know, this, these are situations where Coach Kenny G wants her, his, his, uh, his pitchers, and I'm sure Coach. Uh, Everly wants to do the same thing. Stretch them a little bit. Learn to fight through adverse situations because you're going to be in these off and on throughout the course of a year. Exactly. Being in challenging situations as a player is what really helps you grow, especially for Kyra Acock only being a sophomore and, you know, getting put in these tough situations and just learning how to work through them. You know, even though they do have such a – strong staff and they have other pitchers that can come in and relieve her it's really important for her to work through these situations and get comfortable absolutely and again i think you feel like you can put up enough offense to even you know learn in these situations even if it doesn't go so well but how about that for getting out of trouble kenzie derryberry gets caught looking the shortstop will sit down on a third strike call by the home plate umpire yeah, this pitch just on the inner half of the plate, a great location, really good pitcher's pitch for Kyra Acock, and she's doing so well fighting back with the bases loaded, zero outs. She got an easy ground out back to her and now a strikeout. So now her defense is in a great position to get out of this inning. No doubt they are. Chad Spittler, the home plate umpire, rung her up. Speaking of Derry Berry, and that'll bring up the second baseman. Now you don't have a fly ball situation. Emily Girardi out of Omaha, Nebraska. Getting, looking for a first hit, a freshman, as we talked about, they've had a injury at second, so she's getting the start here, and she starts ahead, though, 2-0. and And if you're Kyra, you gotta be careful here. Obviously, no place to put her. There's a called strike. Looked like Kyra reared way back a little extra there for that one. <laughs> yeah, and as a hitter in this situation, you you have to know that in the back of your mind. They're most likely not going to walk you. So just being aggressive and getting your pitch and taking a good hack at it is the mindset as a batter in this situation. 3-1, bases loaded, two out. Man, if there's ever a Rachel Becker moment as a, a, batter, a batter's moment, this is it right here, right? Oh, for sure. You know she's got to come across the plate, and you got to be ready for it. Try not to foul it off and get at three and two. Oh, there's a called strike, and Girardi thought it was ball four. Started to take that trot, and she'll have to step back in there at three and two. That was a really good pitch too on three and one to get it right on the inside corner. And got her swinging for a strikeout and the counter. Coach Kenny G. Yeah, they are just continue to reload this team every year and always come back so strong. So definitely looking to get another trip to Oklahoma City this year. They are on point for that to happen. And we will keep a close eye on this team as they continue to progress through the Big 12 huge series coming up. Again, we'll look at those schedules in just a little bit for the Cowgirls right now. Michaela Wark, the sophomore out of Frisco, down 0-2, batting 292 on the season. And she falls behind quickly here to Hooley. And that's a ball, 1-2. and two. Kyra Aycock now with four strikeouts. Cowgirls have only managed one here so far early, and Missouri State's played well. That one is hit shallow left field, coming in, flying in, make that stop as our catch is McCoy, and she's able to do that for out number one. Good pitch sequence there by Hooley. She got ahead, was hitting the corners, and then threw that pitch up in the zone, was able to get Michaela Work to 
swing underneath that one and get an easy pop up. McCoy did a good job to get there and there's out number one for the Cowgirls here in the bottom of two. That one is hit off the glove of Hooley. Schneidmiller going to try to beat it out, and she does. Audrey Schneidmiller, the catcher, hits one off the glove of Hooley, picked up by the shortstop Derry Berry. The throw not in time. Schneidmiller takes the first pitch she, see she sees. It's up in the zone, but she's able to get her hands up and uh, pound the ball down. And the pitcher, Hooley, able to get a glove on that one, but. Schneidmiller's able to beat it out. Crable from third is actually the one that got the carom and made the throw, was not in time. So the Cowgirls get credited with another hit, their third of the ball game. Runner at first, one gone. To Megan Bloodworth, the shortstop. Takes ball one, count evens at one and one. Talked about that trip for the Cowgirls. Went to Provo, Utah. And first time they faced BYU in a Big 12 matchup. You talked about the scenery up there. Sees what everybody comes away with is just how incredibly beautiful this, the campus setting is in Provo. Yeah, it was really pretty. They had mountains on, you know, either side of the stadium. So it was like everywhere you looked had an amazing view. Um, I wish we had a little more time to do like some skiing or something, but <laughs> yeah, just an awesome place, I think, to go to school. That one is foul back. Count will go to one and two. And talking to Kitty Gajewski earlier today, he said that it was a, again, just a fantastic facility. Saw something I've never seen before in watching that broadcast on ESPN Plus from guys out there. BYU did a great job. Student section somewhat behind home plate every time the Cowgirls and I think it was Ivy Rosenberry was pitching They would raise their hands and then swing to one side or the other like it's a free throw in a basketball game And would try to create this optical illusion to mess up mess with the pitcher and I've never seen that before But it was creative and apparently Ivy didn't wasn't really affected by it, but kind of a fun way to mess with the pitcher, I guess, huh? Yeah, Ivy was just locked in, I guess, for that. But no, they did have a great atmosphere. They had a ton of people there and had, you know, their mascot doing yeah. some backflips all over the place. So it was really cool. One of the coolest new mascots in the league. One of the coolest new mascots in the league. I think Big 12 Cowgirl fans would tell you Pistol Pete's the coolest. <laughs> Good to have these new teams in the league and adding four more next year. 2-2, Two -two, that one is hit into right. Shot right and coming on is Mueller and she can't make the stop. It's going to roll all the way to the wall. And the Cowboys have no choice but to go here because Bloodworth was getting chased up on by Anderson. And man, you see the speed by Anderson. She turned second and Bloodworth was not far ahead of her. Yeah, Megan Bloodworth just punches this ball into shallow right field, right fielder. Uh, Mueller, you know, makes an attempt to catch the ball. I think that held Audrey Schneidmiller, sorry, Schneidmiller up at first base. And uh, as soon as it got through, she was running as fast as she could, but Megan Bloodworth almost passed her well, up. Yeah, I misspoke. I said it was Schneidmiller that was about to get passed by Bloodworth at second. And my goodness, so they will give her a triple. And if you're out in the outfield and you're Mueller, you know, you want to be aggressive, but you got to understand there's nobody behind you. And that ball took a slow roll all the way to the wall, which allowed the Cowgirls to get all the way around the bags. Exactly. I love the aggressiveness, you know, trying to catch that ball or, you know, if she maybe dove for that one, would, would have had a better shot. But it is very risky when there's not, you know, a lot of time for the center fielder to come over and back up. So the ball rolled all the way to the wall. So that is a... RBI for Bloodworth. And that'll bring up Taylor Anderson, the left fielder for the Cowgirls. Bloodworth there at third with the triple. Four hits now for Oklahoma State. And there's a called strike. One and two to Taylor Anderson, another young lady with speed. Saw that in the BYU series. 
And Taylor Anderson, you know, one of those players that's been in the rotation, I would say, for the outfield. And she got a lot of opportunities last weekend at BYU and did very well. So I'm not surprised to see her again in the lineup today. With one gone, fly ball, tag fly, tag up situation still very much in effect. If she could get one up there, lifted into the outfield, but obviously would like to be on first safely too. As she takes ball three, lays off of that one, and the count goes full. Good job of the freshman running the count full. Well, that was RBI number 17 for Bloodworth on the year. As that one is chopped back. That will stay full. Shipman will track it down, the catcher for the Bears. And we'll get started here again. Anderson batting 444. That one is hit to. The shortstop, Derryberry, makes the play, but a run will score. And again, another Calgary batter doing their job. Anderson got that ball up the middle enough. She hit it pretty hard, but the shortstop, Derryberry, had to move towards her gloved hand side up the middle. And that's ultimately, I think, what made her kind of continue her momentum towards first and get the out at first and is able to push the run across. So Coach Hesse will come out and we're going to have a pitching change. You know, she's really going to try to work side to side and mix in a change up, try to keep the Oklahoma State batters off balance with that. Um, and we've seen her a lot in more of a relief role. She already has four saves this season, so she's definitely comfortable in this spot coming into the game, I think. Cowgirls have rolled over the roster. Back to the top of the order. And Rosie Davis, who started this ball game with a double, later scored one of the three runs represented on the board for Oklahoma State. With that double, one for one on the day. Here's a 2-1. That one's hit sharply, but out of play. Over into the bullpen area for Missouri State. And the count will even at two and two. Two two hit into right field again. Mueller looked like she misjudged it, but gets underneath it, reaches out, and is able to make the catch for out number three. And Johnston does her job for Coach Hesse and the Missouri State. Good replays all the time. Our guys do a great job. I, I, I think if we go back, we'd see him right there. He saved his gum. So he ate his chips, and then he reinserted the gum. Listen, that is a substitution that is, that, I mean, that's been done right there. Oh, my. So we're back to the top of the third. The Cowgirls with a 3 nothing lead, methodically kind of leaking away from the Missouri State Bears. Again, this team has struggled this year, but they've had some injuries, and it's kind of, in fact, they've got an extra injury here out at second base, so they've just had some difficult for sure. As Olivia Crable, the leadoff hitter, will get her second opportunity. That one off her foot and didn't look like it felt very good. Trying to walk it off. Kyra Aycock has done a great job with one, two, three, four strikeouts so far on the day. Yeah, she got herself into some trouble last inning, loading the bases with no outs, and then was able to come right back and get those next three and get out of the inning. She actually has five on the official score. So the Addy, Abby Ford out of the box was counted as a strikeout. At least that's the way it's scored as of right now. That one is flared into right field. And it's Wong who comes on, does a good job, gets in front of it, gets it back and holds Crable to the single. A nice at bat there by Crable to Realize that Kyra Acock is really just pounding the zone there, working in and out. And she was getting hacks off and just missing, following a lot of those pitches off. And then she's able to poke one into right field for a single and starting off this inning.
Abby Ford showed. Bunt pulls it back, ball one. Missouri State would like to just chip away right here and try to get runner in scoring position and work their way back into this game. Again, Ford showed bunt, but that time it's in there for a called strike. Again, we weren't sure when Abby Ford was called out earlier, we weren't sure if it was a bunt situation on a two strikes, but it, as it turns out she had illegal contact with the ball out of the batter's box and was called out. And that was the third out of the, excuse me, the second out of the first inning. And she fouls that one back to even the count at two and two. It's interesting. I don't know if you ever had this situation. Well, I know you didn't have the situation because I know where you played as far as your collegiate career is concerned. But to be a player playing for a head coach that you know is stepping down and playing for the head coach you know that's coming in, the dynamics, I mean, obviously Coach Hesse is in charge. This is her team. But the new coach is there too. So I imagine that's kind of an odd dynamic as a player. Yeah, I bet it is a little different too you know, kind of get used to seeing a different coach step up into that main leadership role. But I also think that's really going to help them going forward and really help the transition for the players to have a familiar, you know, coach step into that head coach role after having Coach Hesse be there for so long. Interestingly enough, Coach Keith Gutton, the head coach of the baseball team, as that's hit over to Poulard. And that's going to be safe with the single Ford. Backs up the Crable single, and now the Bears with runners at first and second. Yeah, Ford slaps his ball, I think, in the perfect spot, chops it down, and just gives herself enough time to get to first base. Jillian Poulard, the third baseman, does a good job moving over and fielding that ball, but there just isn't enough time to throw her out because she has so much speed. So that'll bring up Kayla Ulrich, the first baseman, and she shows bunt, misses, and strike one to her. And for the second inning in a row, the Bears have runners in scoring position. There's a called strike. Now with the two-strike count, changes the approach here. They have they've done a good job getting base runners on. Just to finish that thought, Coach Keith Gutt is the 40-year baseball coach at Missouri State. He is retiring after this season. Hit right back to Kyra. Kyra decides to throw it to first. Kind of got froze, a little analysis, paralysis by analysis, but Tiz does make the throw and gets the out at first. I think this ground ball was hit hard enough for Kyra to be able to have a play at third or second. And uh, maybe she just didn't get her feet in the right position, didn't feel good about the throw there, and decided to take the safe out at first base. So one gone, runners now at second and third, two of them in scoring position. There's a called strike to Mueller, the right fielder, who had the double her first time up, and a double here would make this a one-run game. Here's a called strike, 0 oh and 2, and so in trouble the last inning, got out of it without giving up a run, and a little bit of trouble right here again with one gone, but an 0-2 count here to Mueller. Do you find yourself looking at Kyra and saying, okay, you're doing a great job of getting out of trouble, or do you take the other side of it and go, you got to quit getting yourself in trouble. You're playing with fire here. I mean, yeah, you ideally would, you know, not like to see those runners even get on base, but I think it's a good job I heard to kind of recover from that quickly and be able to attack the next batters, even though the um, – Missouri State Bears have been putting balls in play and getting some offense going for them. How much of a role is it the infielder right here to help calm her down? How much chatter is going on between them and her? There's a ton of talk going on in the infield all the time. Um, 
<laughs> and runs right at her. Great job. Throws it. Oh, and she hits her. And so the throw hits the runner, and that is Crable, and that will allow a run to score for Missouri State. The runner will get a single RBI and will reach to second base, and it's actually going to be scored again. For the second time in a row, she had an opportunity to go make a play, and I think she kind of got froze for just a minute, but she ran at the runner. It's what you're taught to do, but you got to get the ball out of your hand a little quicker because you only have one way to go, and that's to throw it through her. And again, that's not the Cowgirls' normal catcher either, so a little bit different in that whole situation. Exactly. And I think that's just a good showing also of if you put the ball in play, good things are going to happen. So, you know, Mueller able to put something in play, even starting out 0-2 in that count and just make some things happen and get a run on the board. So Kyra Aycock has made some really good plays has gotten in some trouble and has pitched her way out of it for the most part, but back in a little more trouble here with two runners in scoring position. Top of the third, up three to one and one gone to the designated player. And there's a ball that gets by Schneidmiller. Schneidmiller tries to make a play, throws it back in. How about that? Oh, now that one may get reviewed. The ball got by Schneidmiller. She tried to toss it over to Kyra. No really need to do it. He gets by Kyra, then Poulard has to come in and throw it home, and there is a play that's really close here at home. Yeah, a lot going on in that play for sure, and Kyra, I really do think that Ford sneaks in there. She is a pitcher, so, you know, not the best person to be putting that tag down, but... Uh, and that one is hit right back to Kyra. This time she turns, stops the feet of the runner, which was the pinch runner in Taylor Akers and we'll get the out at first. That was a very definitive defensive play by Kyra. That was a very good job. Oh, for sure. She got that ball quickly, looked back the runner at third and got the easy out at one. And just, she just keeps getting these balls hit right back at her. So if she keeps doing that, she should be okay. You know, it's interesting too, whether when you analyze the innings that she's had, she has had a lot hit right to her, which is exactly what you want. Why yeah. you want that soft grounder right back to you? And, but unfortunately, Misplayed a couple and it's allowed the Bears to get back in this thing at three to two, doing exactly what we said they wanted to do. That one is on the ground. Schneidmiller makes the play, throw in time, and McCoy is going to be thrown out at first. What an inning! There's a lot going on, a lot to talk about. Following her time, she represented Canada three times at the Olympics, including a bronze medal in 2020. At the age of 39, congratulations to Lauren Bay and all the entire inductees that will go into the class of 2024 Hall of Honor at Oklahoma State. What an honor that is, and what a pitcher she was. I think having strong pitchers is a great tradition that Oklahoma State has. You know, Michelle Smith, another amazing pitcher for the program, and some awesome pitchers on the team this year as well. So just continuing that is what has helped them be so successful over the years. Got a question for you on that topic in just a moment. It's two and one here as the count to Poulard starting the bottom of the third. Hits that one, gets underneath it. Center fielder Ford is on and calling her off is Mueller in right field for out number one. I was just at a 13U tournament this week and it seems to me that we are starting to see more and more young ladies that are capable of pitching at 12, 13, 14, 15 years old. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's always been that way as Carly Godwin will step in for the Cowgirls. But it seems like these young ladies are developing their pitching skills way earlier. And the pool of pitchers is better than it used to be. As that one is hit sharply, it's going to hit the ground. And that's going to be a double for Carly Godwin. Or at least it's going to be a close. And she is there in time for the slide-in double. Any thoughts on what, what, I mean, you know, does there seem to be pitching seems to be better earlier now? Have you seen enough youth softball to know? I'm not super invested in youth softball, but I, I mean, it makes sense to me. I think a big trend in sports is to get these kids exposed to high level coaching and, you know, personal lessons and all that good stuff at a young age. And, um, so that's probably where that's coming from, if I had to guess. That one is fouled back. It just gives Caroline Wong, the right fielder, has a single to her credit on the day and looking to help her team out with a runner in scoring position. But 
you know, you said the strength and, and the history of Oklahoma State is there's been so many good pitchers over the years, and Oklahoma State certainly had their few. You go back to Casey Freeze a few years ago. You go back to, again, just uh, Samantha Shaw. You, you can go on and on. Miranda Ellish. Carrie Eberle. Carrie Eberle. <laughs> that's exactly right. You mentioned the kids that are on this team. Now, I mean, it, it's just been very, very good. And it just seems like that, that – uh, String of good pitchers becomes more and more available all the time. You know, I think it's a great point too that you know young ladies, young guys in baseball, other sports, they're getting the same thing. They're getting, you're right, they're getting that individualized treatment. People like Rachel Becker are out doing these individual workouts and teaching people how to hit and doing those sorts of things. So kids are getting good level instruction at certainly a much younger age than maybe when you were a kid. Possibly. <laughs> yeah, I, no, I agree. I think that, I mean, I've seen a ton of that, so that definitely makes sense. 2-2. Two, two. That one is hit to the shortstop, makes the catch. That is, excuse me, Girardi, the second baseman, makes the catch. And Godwin is back in there, but two gone here in the bottom of the third. Girls trying to get some insurance as called strike to Tim, the center fielder. 0 for 1, reached on a fielder's choice. Four home runs on the season, batting 383. Cowgirls have out hit Missouri State, but only by one hit, 5 to 4. And that equals the difference in the run as well. Run differentials at 3 and 2. Tim takes ball one there, count even at 1 and 1. hit going to go a mile high Ulrich will get underneath it just in foul territory makes the catch for out number as is I would say and it's cool to see Kansas breaking into that top 25 as well left fielder Anderson tries to get to that one can and a good start for the Bears here in the top of the fourth as the catcher Emily Shipman gets another double the third one we've seen in this game yeah, she's able to sort of meet this pitch up in the zone. Might have been a rise ball and get her hands up, get on plane with that and drive it down the left field line. And Taylor Anderson, you know, tries to make a sliding stop there and it just sneaks by and gets to the wall. Uh, so a good start for the Bears offense in this inning. A pinch runner. That'll be Sophia King out of Conway, Arkansas. We'll go to second and... That'll bring up the shortstop, Kenzie Derryberry, as Ken Anderson had good speed, got underneath it, just could not make the catch. And so another runner in scoring position, third consecutive inning in which Missouri State's been able to do that. They've done a great job at the bats today against Kyra Aycock. Derryberry will take strike one. Derryberry 0 for 1, batting 70 on the season. And behind here, 0-1-1 shows Bucks. That's off the plate for ball one. Kyra Aycock, 4-2 on the season. One save. Giving up 54 hits on the year and 54 and two-thirds innings pitch. So just under one, actually one hit per inning so far this season. 38 strikeouts and 18 walks, but struggling a little bit today by her standards anyway. Here's the one, two. Not struggling there, gets her sixth strikeout of the ball game, and so it's been kind of feast or famine for the Missouri State Bears at the plate. Yeah, Kyra Acock doing a good job in this at bat, getting ahead and just putting that ball right on the outside corner where as a batter, you want to protect and try to get a, a piece of that pitch. And Kyra Acock just puts it in the perfect spot to uh, get her to miss out of the zone on that one. And I think there was a called strike right there on the on the batter, Emily Girardi. Oh, if she had, if she stepped in the box and then stepped out, 
Yeah, or possibly a timing violation there for her, because I know the batters have, I think, 10 seconds to get in the box, so that could be it as well. So there you go. It's the first time we've seen that with the new rules and the timing rules this year. With our broadcast anyway, and so that is a was a strike and two balls issued since then. I want to go back to conversation that you have with a struggling pitcher as an infielder. Is it truly pitcher by pitcher? Because some pitchers probably don't want to hear it, right? I don't. Hey, okay, I got it. Yeah, got it. I know. So, did it depend on the temperament of the person in the circle as to exactly what you said to that person? Uh, a little bit. I think also as you get to know each of your pitchers, you start to realize what they need and what they want from you. And I also think as an infielder, it's kind of your job to just talk to them, whether, you know, they really listen or they don't. But, um, yeah, I kind of think it just takes getting to know the pitcher. And, you know, some pitchers like to make eye contact with their fielders and, and talk back and stuff like that. And some just kind of seem to block it out. But it's still important to kind of give them that encouragement and, uh, you know, let them know that you're there and you're behind them and you're going to help them out. The 3 2 is fouled off by Girardi. And ever look at one of them and go, What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I would never say that to them. But, you know, maybe you think that in your head. <laughs> Why are you throwing it across the plate every time? 3 2 with one gone in the top of the fourth. And Girardi takes ball four. So another. I'd be happy. I'd be like, hey, now if I get a ground ball, we're getting two outs. So. I mean, kind of just to look on it, look a different look on it, I guess. Especially with two outs, that one good throw by Schneidmiller down the line, forcing Shipman to come back in hand first. Actually, again, that's the pinch runner. That is Sophia King at second in there, pinch running for the catcher in Emily Shipman. But had to go back in hand first. So good throw from the knees by Schneidmiller, at least keeping her awake out there and keeping her honest. The 2-0. Misses and the count goes to three and oh. So Oklahoma State got out of the first inning one, two, three, but has has not faced less than five batters in the last couple of innings. And here's the fourth one of the inning for Missouri State here. Four, so back to back walks, and they're loaded again here for Kyra Aycock and company. Surprised we haven't seen a, a at least a visit by Carrie Everly out of the dugout. I agree. I think that it might be a good time for you know Coach Everly to go out and talk to her, but I'm sure they're also having discussions in between innings as well. So. Just kind of letting her work through it, it seems like. Missouri State, I believe, has left four on to this point. They've got three more on the bags right now with one out. And Abby Ford, who had a single her last time up, takes a strike there in the count 0-2. And, 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 you know, it seems almost like Kyra, when put in her back against the wall, almost pitches angry. <laughs> yeah, like as soon as she lets the bases get loaded, she's like, okay, I'm going to start striking people out now. I'm going to work. <laughs> that went off the plate. Good job by Schneidmiller to keep it in front of her. That one was well off the plate. And holding the runners at bay. The one, two. Chopped in the dirt. Uh, before being very careful there not to be called out of the box, which she was in her first A.B. Had the single in the third. And behind in the count, one, two here. And there's a third strike call and another strikeout for Kyra Aycock. That's number seven on the day. Is that one? 
That's a heck of a pitch here. Yeah, definitely a pitcher's pitch all the way out on the outer half. I think Abby Ford thought about it, but it did look pretty outside. So a good pitch by Kyra Acock. So again, the situation changes right here. Ulrich is going to have to get one out of the infield, find a base hit to be able to score a run now with two gone. She falls behind 0-1. And she falls behind 0-2 with a big cut. Missouri State, I think, just really looking for a big hit. And in these situations, they've had the bases loaded a couple times now and got lucky that last inning having some miscues from Oklahoma State defense. And how but about Kyra Acock comes back with three straight strikeouts. Uh, you know, both those players got rung up on the outer half there. So probably trying to just stick up for her players a little bit. And, you know. I said earlier, if you don't think she still has fire <laughs> in her belly and can still coach at a high level, you, you haven't been around her very often. And I don't know Coach Essie. I spent 10 minutes with her like you did. I was thoroughly impressed. And that, that again, that's... That's interesting as she comes out here and lets the umpires hear about it. Michaela Wark will lead things off for the Cowgirls here. Now, again, let's go back to what Coach Hansi said. I need six outs from each pitcher. Six outs. Six outs. Well, they got five by Hooley. And since then, you've had a pretty good run here by the, the backup in this one, which is Gracie Johnston, again, out of Augusta, Kansas. And she's pretty much come in and done her job. Yeah, I think if she keeps dealing and holding off the Oklahoma State hitters, I don't see why. I don't see why they should take her out. You know, if she can get more than six, then you might as well. Let them keep going. Great backhand by Grable, but it's just foul. And she'll have to come back with a 3-2 count. Boy, that was extremely close to being inside that bag. It's great hands, though, by Crable. Yeah, that must have just been right outside the base there. A good snag over there at third. But it does look to be foul. So 3-2. This one's hit sharply. It's hit in the zone. It's hit out of the park. Home run. Touch them all. Sound the horn. The Cowgirls have another home run to their credit. And the Cowgirls have doubled up Missouri State 4-2. There is that patented horn. Cowgirls get it done with, there's a good look at Scotland David. And boy, she got every bit of this one right. Oh yeah, a great swing by Michaela Wark. This ball's up in the zone and she meets it and actually hits it out. That's her dad out there that catches that ball. So an awesome moment for them. A great swing by Michaela Wark. The last time that happened that I can recall was Sydney Pennington and her dad caught one of her home run balls as well. And that's an awesome shot right there is as Michaela Wark Gets it done for Oklahoma State. Now, I want to go back to what we just saw in between innings as well. Is Audrey Schneidmiller, the catcher, one and one of the day. We saw Vanessa Shippey come out and gre gre bring everybody together as a group. And I, I, I said to you, that looks like a do-better talk to me as there's another one hit sharply. But Ford is going to get back and is able to make the catch on Schneidmiller. But there was a do-better talk going on between innings for Oklahoma State, and looks like the do-better talk has done, done something for the Cowgirl hitters. Exactly. I think those talks really just kind of help you refocus and, you know, kind of just have a new mindset going forward. And Coach Shippey is really good about giving these hitters encouragement, helping them go into the box prepared. Another one hit first pitch hit and that one is going to be caught so two gone great job right there by the second baseman Girardi able to get over there and make the stop or make the catch I should say yeah Johnson keeps using her rise ball to get the Oklahoma State batters to pop up and uh, the second baseman able to track that all the way over almost to the fence um, and catch that fly ball. So good job by her. Absolutely. She was fighting the wind, but somehow found a way to get there, get the glove on it, and foul territory for out number two. So a home run followed by a couple of pop outs for the well, a fly out and a pop out for the Cowgirls. And that brings up Taylor Anderson, left fielder, the freshman. 
Showed bunt. Now she slaps it. It hits her in the box. That's a foul. Dead ball. And I thought the first one was called strike. So they have it at one and one here. I guess the first one was a ball. So the count even at one and one with two gone. Anderson batting 400 on the season. That one tall out of the zone. Well, there's been a lot that has gone on in this four innings of, of softball. There has been a lot of things we have seen. A lot of action. Not all of it great, but both teams fighting hard in a 4-2 advantage for Oklahoma State as Anderson takes strike two. It's interesting, too, watching a young player look at that third base coaching box. Looking for that approval from Kenny Gajewski. You have to have good at bats if you're going to play for Oklahoma State. Exactly. And I think another thing with Taylor Anderson being a slapper, Coach G, a lot of times you'll see him kind of just put his hands out and be like, do what you want to do. Like, you want to bunt, you want to hit, you want to slap, then that's up to you. And however you can get on base is, you know, in your hands. Do what you got to do. And that. Ball misses to run the count full at three and two. And if you missed it, Coach Hesse, the 36-year head coach for Missouri State, just got tossed for something she said in between innings. And there's ball four for Taylor Anderson. If I'm not mistaken, that's only that is the first walk of the day. Missouri State pitchers have issued. So the Cowgirls have a runner at first. Two gone, and we go back to the top of the order. There is a good look at Taylor Anderson. She is certainly a threat to take off for Oklahoma State. Four or five stolen bases on five attempts so far this year is Davis one for two. And double scored the run in the first. That one is hit right down the third base side. Great job right there. Great placement. And the Cowgirls are going to send her. They're going to try to get home. And they do. Another RBI double by Rosie Davis. Rosie Davis able to just turn on this pitch and get it down the third baseline. And uh, with the speed of Taylor Anderson, even though the outfielder Ellie McCoy cuts that ball off from getting the wall, she's able to score from first base. Go back to Michaela Ward's pitch. Good time to mix it up with the uh, two hitter coming up. Well, I guess we have a pinch hitter now, but top of the lineup coming up for the Cowgirls. Um, you know, just give them a new look as the Cowgirls were starting to manufacture some runs. So the Cowgirls are going to put in Sophie Page. She's going to be pinch hitting for Jillian. Page out of Chatham, Alabama, a junior. And she takes ball one. Count evens at 1-1. One, one. Page. Big cut there, falls behind one and two. Transfer from University Alabama, Birmingham, UAB. And a third strike call in the McKenzie Stillwater Pioneer, Lady Pioneer. In I think that they're just looking for a couple of more key hits in those situations with the bases loaded. Yeah, you know, they've left seven on the bags and, you know, you manage just one hit somewhere and that's a that's a 5-4 score, if not a 5-5 score here or there is the mention, put the ball in play, good things happen. And that's what Missouri State has been able to do against Kyra Aycock, who will come in to continue this game. Annie Mueller, the right fielder. One for two today with that double batting 243 has 15 RBI on the season. Cowgirls do have two errors. They've changed a couple of scoring, but two errors today. And you know, we've seen a few of those over the last couple of weeks. Unfortunately, yes, I do think the Cowgirls defense isn't as sharp as it normally is. And, you know, we've seen some balls just hitting off the glove and 
not making as many plays, but luckily their offense is usually good enough to support that. Missouri State started the second inning with a double. They started the third inning with a single. And they started the fourth inning with a double. Trying to get another base runner on to start and keep that pressure on Oklahoma State. The count goes full though and they called strike on the 3-1. If you want to see what Coach Casey Griffith is all about, Coach Hesse getting tossed, we get a chance to see that as that one's hit sky high. Drifting over is is a page who came in at third and she's able to get underneath that and make the catch. Nice play there by Page. A good catch by Sophie Page at third base. She did exactly what she was supposed to do, got over to the wall, found the wall with her right hand, um, knew exactly where she was, and was able to kind of track back and make that catch. So one gone here, and Mueller does not get on base for the first time in three innings. Now the Bears don't have the leadoff runner aboard, or leadoff batter aboard. Brings up the designated player. That is Alexis Morales. Look at her numbers on the day, one for two. Still batting 409. Batting out of the fifth spot. There's a ball. Couple of runs give the Cowgirls that three-run cushion. Does that help Kyra? in coming in here and trying to get settled down a little bit. I think it does help a lot, especially, you know, Kyra has kind of gotten into some challenging situations, but when you have more run support, it's always helpful. Well, I was, uh, I set us up on that one incorrectly because Perales, the designated player, goes yard and she touches them all and meets her entire Jo uh, happy, joyful team at home plate, and that makes it a 5-3 game as Corrales just turns on this one in a hurry. Yeah, this pitch is on the lower inner half, and she just meets it exactly where she needs to, gets her hips open, able to go down and get that ball. And, you know, with Kyra Acock throwing so hard, you don't even really need to swing that hard. And I'm not saying she didn't swing hard, but... You know, a great job just get, meeting her barrel to that ball, getting it over the left field fence. You know, in basketball, the people, individuals, men, women, basketball players, make shots that weren't good shots. They call them, they call them bad shot makers. That was a good pitch. That, that I mean, that was a terrific pitch. I thought Perales just a good pitch, a bad pitch hitter, right? I mean, she made the most out of what looked like a really well pitched softball. Yeah, you can't be too mad about that as Kyra Acock did put that in the lower inner half. I think that the batter of Perales, just a really good piece of hitting for her to go down and get that pitch. Yeah, it looked to me like that was in a spot you 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 would be very happy with and expect it to be fouled off, but Ooh. it ended up being a ball that went the opposite direction over the field and it's five to three. Now McCoy hit by pitch, grounded out. For her first hit today, 2-1. That one spun high in play and just out of play. So the count will go to two and two. Just talked about Kyra settling down. I thought again it was a terrific pitch, but give Perales credit. She went down, got it, lifted it out, and used that wind to get out of here. Foul back. Count will stay two and two. Texas coming up for Oklahoma State, and we said you can't look past anybody. This is exactly why. Cowgirls don't have their typical starting rotation on the field right now, but expectations don't change even when you make those substitutions. And there is ball four. I think that hit her knee. I think you're right. I think it did hit her. I thought it was ball four, but it did sound like it ticked off of Coach Casey Griffith is the coach now in the dugout, and she will make a change, bringing in a designated player. 
That is Sydney McLaughlin, the other aforementioned Stillwater, Oklahoma young lady. Played for the Lady Pioneers, batting 163. Three home runs on the season, seven RBI. And she's ahead in the count, 2 0. So another runner on base for Missouri State. That's been their biggest issue today. They've had six hits, but they've left seven on the bags. 2 0. That one misses inside, 3 0. You know, Kyra throws hard, Ivy comes in, and she just throws a little bit harder. I mean, she can really bring it in there. Definitely. She just really gasses it in there, and Kyra does as well. And they throw kind of similar similar stuff, drop. Uh, Kyra does throw a rise ball. I don't think Ivy throws a rise ball. But, um, you know, both hard throwers use their drop a lot, work in and out, and really just pound the zone. You know, we, we see a good shot of Kyra. I don't think she feels very good about that outing, but she got a chance to get the win. That one is hit into right field. That'll be a single for the other Stillwater product, and Stillwater kids doing well for Missouri State. Sydney McLaughlin gets a single. But again, eight strikeouts for her on the day, but and only gave up one earned run, but it was, again, just gave up a lot of hits and didn't feel as clean and as sharp as she normally is. But Ivy gives up a single to start things for her. So, again, very interesting day for the Cowgirls in the circle as Derry Berry, big cut, misses on that one. 0 for 2 today with a couple of strikeouts. Yeah, great start for Missouri State off of Ivy to come in right away and to get a base hit on the first at bat off a new pitcher, I think is a huge confidence boost for the offense. And again, especially with a designated hitter, right, coming in and making that hit, making that change. Stillwater Kid getting an opportunity inside the stadium and making the most of her opportunity. Count will stay 0-2 as Derry Berry fouls that one off. And Derry Berry struggles again. There's another strikeout, her third of the day. The first for Ivy Rosenberry. Uh, Ivy Rosenberry just brings this pitch up in the zone. She knows she's ahead in the count, doesn't have to bring anything too close. So it's also tough as a batter with such a high velocity and you know you're used to seeing her go low in the zone and then to switch it and come up it just it looks so good and then <laughs> you miss it and you're like oh <laughs> uh, it had such potential as Girardi is 0 for 1 with the strikeout and the walk now Schneidmiller showing a lot of uh, a lot of emotion behind the plate today and throwing that fist pump and you know, as, a, as we talked about the conversation with the infield, certainly that catcher's got to be the, the, the biggest cheerleader for the pitcher. Definitely. I think the catcher really is the most important for the pitcher to be talking to them and <laughs> hyping them up. Well, she's hyped again because back-to-back -back strikeouts get them as they can get back into the Missouri Valley. Trying to pull off the upset here. That this team on the season, they lost to number five Clemson, number 13 Oregon, number eight Tennessee, and now got number eight Oklahoma State. They have had a good schedule. Struggled it with the, the top 25, top 10 teams that they have faced, top 15, I guess, if you include Oregon at number 13. But another good opportunity for them in the midweek, trying to pull off a huge upset and get them jump started once again. the way they're playing right now against Oklahoma State, which is such a successful team so far this year, is really going to give them some more confidence going into the weekend. I think you're right. I, I think they, they should be gaining some confidence out of this. You know, the other thing is you bring two Stillwater kids back, as that one's a call strike on the 3-0 to Carly Godwin. Stillwater kids want to perform well in Stillwater, right? I mean, I know you, if you were going back home, some place, location, you know, everybody wants to do well when they get a chance to go back in that kind of situation. Of course, and usually, you know, all your family and your friends are there to watch, so it's always fun to kind of go somewhere close to home and be able to play in front of a lot of the people that you know. 
Absolutely, and that's what Mackenzie Swick's doing in the circle right now. And after a 3 0 count, two called strikes. And finally, Carly Godwin tosses the bat for the third time and is able to get the walk and travel down to first. So the Cowgirls have a base runner, and we're going to have a courtesy runner, so it would seem, for the Oklahoma State Cowgirls. And I believe that is Hayden Sokolowski will come in. Young lady out of Flower Mound, Texas. Played at Marcus High School. She'll get a chance to run for the Cowgirls. With the Cowgirls a 5-3 lead. You know, again, going back to Missouri Valley, game's coming up very soon. And you know, when you played as well as you have here today, knowing you're down some players, not even fully loaded today, I mean, there's a lot if you're Missouri State to take, as you said, momentum out of this going into their, their weekend. As that one is crushed, and maybe that takes away a little bit of that momentum. What a job right there as Caroline Wong sound the horn. She'll touch them all, and the Cowgirls add two more to the tote board. That's another rocket off the bat of Wong, and there's the horn. Caroline Wong, I think she just takes this first pitch up in the zone, and that's exactly what you're looking for as a hitter, to you know see something elevated, something you can turn on, and that's exactly what she does. And you know, despite the wind blowing the opposite direction, she hit that ball so hard and is able to get the offense going in the bottom of the fifth. We saw Alexis per Perales hit one over in that same area with a line shot, and now Caroline Wong does that for the Cowgirls, and the Cowgirls take a 7-3 lead. As the off-speed called ball for Claire Tim, the center fielder. Batting in the five hole today, reached on a fielder's choice and had a pop out, so she's 0 for 2 today. Batting 379, and that one is fouled down the first base side. Since the do better talk from coach Vanessa Shippey seems like the, the approach and the adjustments by the cowgirl hitters has been way more aggressive certainly early in the pitch count. Yeah, it seems like they're taking you know some better swings uh, the last couple innings and um, it's paying off with the, the two home runs in the last two innings. And there, some hard hit balls. Excuse me. There is a rocket to Ulrich and. That's a well hit ball to give Ulrich credit. She got underneath it. But that, again, to your point right there, again, that's just a very, it's a ball screaming off the bat for the line out for Tim. Yeah, that's one of those ones where as a fielder, you kind of just, your instincts take over in that moment. And you don't even know what's happening, but the next second you've caught the ball. So a great catch over there by the first baseman. I'll bring up Michaela Wark, her last time she left the yard. And the solo home run. One for two today. The off speed. Misses count. Goes to 2 and 0 to the chagrin of the Missouri State fans. Mark batting 299 on the season. Another off speed, and that one just off the plate. Count 3 and 0. Lead off walk for Godwin, followed up by a two run RBI home run from Caroline Wong. And the Cowgirls trying to get it going again here, and there's the call and strike. Is that, that fourth pitch has fooled the Cowgirls a few times. Thought it was a ball four, but Wark will get back in there. That one is hit. In the gap for a single and a base hit for Michaela Wark. Good swing there by Michaela Wark. You know, being 3 1 as a hitter, you're looking to be aggressive, looking to hit something that is in your perfect spot where you're looking, and that's exactly what she does, able to get that ball hard hit through the 5 6 hole. Looks like we may have another pinch runner for the Cowgirls. 
and we'll bring in Macy Graff out of Alito, Texas. She'll go to first and get a chance to see her on the bag running for the Cowgirls. This has worked out pretty well for him. You know, coach talks about good ABs. He says, I can handle outs. I can handle strikeouts even. But you have to compete. So what does a good AB look like? What does a good AB look like even if you foul out or if you strike out? Is, it, is there truly such a thing? Yeah, I think so. Uh, we talk a lot about, you know, Quab's quality at bats and how in that situation, say you do strike out, but you battled in the count, you know, worked at two or three, two count, fouling, fouling pitches off. Um, stuff like that, you know, just being competitive, not letting the pitcher throw you balls and you swing at them or throw you strikes and you take three, you know, like stuff like that. That's, those are not good at bats, but just taking swing, good swings on good pitches, I would say, is the main thing. Coach is really big on that. Uh, this is not the result, it's the competitiveness. And Audrey Schneidmiller going to try to go out, and she does another two-run shot. Sound the horn. The Cowgirls have another home run, leaving the park, touch them all again, and there is that patented horn. That, that wall's getting worked over right now in left field. Exactly. Another pitch here you can see a little elevated and just right over the plate, and Audrey Schneidbilder, Schneidbilder <laughs> is able to open up and just drive that ball over the left field wall. So a walk followed by a home run. Then the Cowgirls lined out with that great shot by Claire Tim. A single followed by another home run. And the Cowgirls lead it 9-3. to three, And that will bring Coach Griffin in. And she will make another pitching change. Coach Case Cowgirls. And she takes ball one. Katie Lott out of Cypress, Texas. And the 1-0 is outside, 2-0. So the Cowgirls could theoretically end this thing with another one of those base runners followed by a two-run shot, leading by six now at 9-3 and out hitting Missouri State 10-7. There's a called strike. 2-1 to Katie Lott. Katie Lott batting 280 on the season. Only her 26 at bat of the season. She has been a pinch hitter a lot in most of those opportunities this season. And she takes ball three. Cowgirls today batting 455 as a team. Missouri State 304. That one is hit to the shortstop Derry Berry throw over and Lott is out for the second out of the inning. So the Cowgirls will make another substitution. Another pinch hitter and coming in for Taylor Anderson will now be Lexi McDonald out of Silo, Oklahoma. And there's a good look at Mackenzie Swick, the pitcher. And there's the young lady out of Silo. Hitting for the Cowgirls, number 31, Lexi McDonald. So Lexi will step in the box. Talk about coming in in these situations and these opportunities, how important they are to get more opportunities. Yeah, it's definitely important. And kind of like we were just saying, the most important thing is to just have a good at bat. And, you know, you might not always get a hit, but as long as you're battling and taking good aggressive swings at good pitches, Coach G is going to like to see that. And, you know, most of the time when you do take good swings on good pitches, you do get good results. So just, you know, also staying calm, though, coming in off the bench. You don't want to do too much. Yeah, no. It's hard to probably stay in the moment when you get one AB, you know, and in in come in cold that way. But again, looks over immediately at coach and falls behind here one and two. The off speed, third strike call, rung her up. And that'll be a strike again here in the top of the sixth. And 
and a called strike there to Olivia Crable. Good look at her. She's kind of smiling. I don't think they've liked the calls by the home plate umpire all year long. And Kenny G is going to make sure everybody's right in the lineup. And maybe a little shift going on right here as well. Oh, thank you, sir. That's why they call him the best in the business. Carly Godwin will go to first for Sokolowski. Bloodworth will go to shortstop for Katie Lott. Or Katie Lott, yeah. Anderson to left. Lexi McDonald in for her. Wong to designated player and Graf to right field. There's the lineup change for the Oklahoma State Cowgirls. So, again, with a 9-3 lead, chance to get more youngsters a opportunity. That's kind of where we are right now. So, coach, make sure they get that taken care of. Not sure what that was as Rosenberry absolutely blew that by Crable. Ball almost hit the glove before she started her swing. That's what Ivy Rosenberry is going to do to you. She throws gas. So you really have to, as a hitter, you really have to focus on getting your foot down and um, just know that you got to get started early because it's coming in hot. Rosenberry with a 1.02 ERA. That one is hit. You know, you mentioned this with Kyra too. You don't have to do a whole lot. Sometimes the ball's coming in so quick. Going back to that home run by Perales, just get a bat on it, get the barrel on it, let it do the work. Well, that's definitely true with Ivy Rosenberry. And I've said it before, if you're on the corners or you're one of the coaches, you better have your head on a swivel because that ball can come your way very, very quickly. Yeah, exactly. As long as, you know, you get your barrel on the ball, like, solidly, it's going to go. So when facing such high-velocity pitchers, I think the key is – to not do too much as a hitter, you don't want to swing harder. You just want to be on time. That one is just foul as it goes down the first base side, just past Godwin. Actually, check that at first for the Cowgirls. We, it is Godwin, right? Yep. Yeah, thank you. Yes, it is. There we go. Glad to see the number there to confirm that. These numbers on the jerseys. Cowgirls very difficult to see as that one spun back into the net. And the Cal will stay one and two. Rosenberry is going right at her here. Crable, the third baseman, struck out, had a single and a walk. That one is hit into center field. And Tim comes on to make the catch. And the Cowgirls get another out here is at the first out of the inning, I should say, and the Cowgirls trying to limit the number of runners and, and opportunities here and finish this thing off. Put up one run in the first, two in the second. Gave up two in the third and didn't score. The only inning they've lost so far tonight. Outscored Missouri State 2-0 in the fourth and 4-1 four in the fifth. One called strike, 0 and 2. Abby Ford now in there. Got called out out of the box in the first. Had that single and struck out her last time up. Chops out one foul, though, as it hits her. And she'll come back for the one-two again. In this situation, I'm sure Abby Ford, after kind of getting rung up her last at bat, is just looking to do anything she can to put the ball in play and not leave it in the umpire's hands. Third strike, drop, throw. 
not in time. Her foot came off. Godwin's foot came off, and that's a good call. She had to reach up. Schneidmiller made her reach a little bit too far, and that back foot came off the bag. Credit to Schneidmiller for blocking this ball, keeping it in front of her. You know, she makes a good lane for herself. She comes out in front of home plate, makes a good lane, but throw is on the opposite side, and it kind of forces Carly Godwin off the bag. Well, I'll tell you what, it might have been worth another look, but there's a strike call. Very, very close, but that she definitely came off. Not sure if she got it back down or not, as Kayla Ulrich. Looking for her first hit of the day. Nine left on for Missouri State. I think that's going to be the story of the day for them. They've had enough base runners. They just haven't had the timely hitting. They've had the runners in scoring position, but haven't been able to scratch a few across here and there. And not had enough timely hitting as the Cowgirls now have three errors on the day. So we talked about Missouri State and the good things they've done here. And there's another good thing they did. There's some timely hitting. That one's hit into left field. The throw, that'll be a double for Kayla Ulrich. Runners at second and third in scoring positions. This one just got by Page at third. Yeah, a nice piece of hitting there by the freshman Kayla Ulrich to kind of turn on that pitch over the middle and um, she barrels it up down the third baseline is able to you know get Abby Ford over to third and advance to second. We talked about the the momentum that Missouri State is we're going to have some changes here maybe a pinch runner we'll see but what about Oklahoma State how, how do they take this going into the Texas series is this is this a momentum breaker or you just go eh, just you know what we, we played a lot of had a lot of substitutions and gave a lot of kids chances and you don't put too much into this one as long as you win it. Yeah, it's always good to kind of get some of those kids on the bench into the game and get everyone some looks. But I think Oklahoma State going forward is probably going to want to focus on tightening up the defense. Um, you know, three errors is very uncharacteristic for them. So something they're going to want to clean up before going into the weekend against Texas. So the double by Ulrich and Annie Mueller, the right fielder. Big cut misses and takes ball one to even the count at one and one. Mueller, one for three today, has the double fielder's choice and popped out. And swings at that one for strike two. There's the one, two. That one catches the outside corner. And there's another strikeout for Izzy, Ivy Rosenberry. <laughs> Rosenberry. <laughs> yeah, a really good pitcher's pitch on the outside corner. And that's been getting called consistently both ways, I would say. So as a batter in that situation, you really just want to try to poke your bat out there, try to foul that off and get another pitch. Um, so good job by Rosenberry to hit that spot on the outside part of the zone. Morales got a home runner last time up, but that was against Kyra Acott. Rosenberry. Starts immediately ahead of her 0-2. Rosenberry now with three strikeouts. Yeah, it seems like whenever the Missouri State hitters start to get some momentum and get some offense going, get some runners on base, it just gets followed up by some strikeouts, and unfortunately that, for them. That's exactly where. And now they will go to a young lady from Oolaga, Oklahoma, Mackenzie Chacon. And she will come in and try to close things out and give her team a chance by not letting the Cowgirls score any more here. And what do we know about her? Yeah, so as you can see, she's a lefty, so mixing it up, coming from the left side. Um, and she throws a rise ball, screw ball, and a curve ball, mostly working side to side. Uh, so, yeah, going to try to close it out for the Bears. Back to the top of the order for the Cowgirls. Rosie Davis, slow roller to third. Crable makes the throw in time, and Rosie Davis 
will be thrown out at first despite that tremendous speed. So a good start here for Chacon. Not sure what we're talking about here. Coach came over now. The conversation. And Rosie Davis goes back to the so an illegal pitch. Maybe something with the substitute. Or get thrown out at first and then get taken back, put the count back to 1-1, one, one, and we do it all over again like that never even happened. So she check swings that one foul, one and two the count. Yeah, we saw something like this in the beginning of the season against, I believe we were playing UCLA. One of their players was hitting and um, maybe didn't get re-entered. I think she got on base, but then ended up, she ended up getting out because of that. Well, so the ground out would have been better than a strikeout, <laughs> but that's what the, the result is. And Rosie Davis ends up striking out anyway. Mm -hmm. So a good pitch there by uh, Chacon. Now to bring up Sophie Page, who came in for Poulard and took over at third. Swing, foul, strike one. And she will take ball one. Count even at one one. This has not been exactly the quickest game we've seen this year. This one started at 430 and I'm going to be really glad they started it so early. They did so because of the temperature cold front moved into Stillwater got very cold here and they wanted to finish it in a more timely manner. Missouri State gets to get home a little bit earlier anyway. But this thing is still kind of drug on as there's a good piece of hitting right there by Sophie Page as she stays alive and just sprays that one into right field or into center field. Yeah, it looked like a off-speed pitch, I believe, from the pitcher, uh, Chacon. And uh, Sophie Page is able to just wait back on that, let the ball get deep, and shoot it back up the middle. The Cowgirls have another runner on. And, boy, I tell you what, if you're keeping track at home with who's in, who's out, what this lineup looks like and who's pinch running and who's pinch hitting and who's what substitutions were made. I hope you started this thing with uh, with a pencil because otherwise it is it's a mess. We know this that young lady Carly Godwin is up next for Oklahoma State. And she takes a strike. She is one for one. She had that sack fly RBI in the first, which scored Rosie Davis. Followed that up with a double in the third, and then had a walk in the fifth. Back up here in the sixth with the count even one and one. Check swing stays home, and that ends up being out of the zone for ball two. What do you like about Godwin's swing? She swings so hard. You can see it every time she swings the bat. She is taking a hack. She's not getting cheated up there at the plate. And, um, you know, she's only a freshman. So seeing her just trusting her swing and being so confident up there as a freshman is really impressive. Two and two here and came in and took over that first base position in large part because of her batting ability. And there's one rip right back up the middle. And that's going to be another single. So back to back singles for the Cowgirls. With one gone and a 9 3 lead. And again, good bit of hitting right there. Yeah, it seems like whatever the Missouri State pitching staff throws at these Cowgirls, they just keep making adjustments and putting balls in play. Well, Caroline Wong's already got a two run home run on the, the night. On the season, she's got 10 home runs. She's got a couple on the bags and could finish this thing with one swing of the bat. Here's the 0-1. Foul back 0-2. Well, 
We talk about Godwin. Tell me about Wong and a little different in age, right? But this young lady can swing the bat. Definitely. She's been such a good addition to the Cowgirls offense this season so far and just so consistent, so much power, so calm at the plate and just a great hitter. Young lady out of Liberty, or should say transferred from Liberty from Paris, Tennessee. And she's behind the count 0 and 2 that one outside. And if I'm. If I am. Her I'm throwing that one off the plate too. Exactly <laughs> especially with such good hitters in this Oklahoma State lineup you want to throw some pitches off the plate try to get them to chase and. You know maybe get a called third strike. 2-2. Two, two. And she goes down swinging. She was trying to end this one here. Big great, yeah, great pitch, though, by uh, Chacon to kind of just climb the ladder. She'd thrown some pitches up in the zone to Caroline Wong. She was taking hacks, fouling them off. But, um, you know, that one just out of the zone and a great pitch. I'm going to bring up Claire Tim. Center fielder 0 for 3. Fielder's choice pop out in a line out, but that line out was a shot as Ulrich at first made a heck of a play on it. And the 1 0 is in there for a called strike. Tim batting 375 on the season, batting 381 with two outs. 300 with runners in scoring position, and she takes ball two. Just a methodical game by Oklahoma State. Looking for their 27th win of the season. Not sure this would be go down as their best, but Missouri State trying to hang in there. How about this just for a little quick math? Coach Hesse has been coaching for 36 years at Missouri State. The program has only had 20 years of non coach Hesse. This program began in 69. And there's a strikeout called by Tim. So finished had eight hits. Um, the Cowgirls there, you saw three errors. They try and decide if it's three or two, but so an unearned, now, couple of unearned runs three, early. Three, Kyra three, Aycock three, four, had eight strikeouts, did a good job, but it was just kind of a, a, a kind of a clunky start, if you will. But has a chance to get the W, and Ivy Rosenberry just absolutely hammers Ellie McCoy. <laughs> it's the third hit by pitch of the game for Ellie McCoy, and I feel bad. She's going to have to ice up that left leg tonight because she took one off the shin, the back of the knee, and then now lower towards her ankle. So she's getting beat up today, but getting on base for her team. Doing her job, and then it rolled up and hit her cap as well, and kind of a crazy deal for sure. And we've got a pinch hitter in there. That is that is Sydney McLaughlin, who is back in there. Actually made the substitution earlier. And she hits that one deep into center field. Tim is back, gets underneath it for out number one. Mentioned that Missouri State Cowgirls had a chance to knock them out, but this one's going to go the distance at least. And Rosenberry's fighting off the sun in the circle right now, trying to get the signal from the dugout. Schneidmiller will come out and talk to her. You can see that bright light on her right side. One gone, nine three, and as we were talking about Missouri State with eight no, hits, and it seemed like every time they started to get runners on base and get some momentum, the Cowgirls pitchers were able to get some key strikeouts and keep them from breaking the game open. We bring up Kenzie Derryberry, three for three on the day, three strikeouts. 
And she will take the first strike there. She's really she's chasing some some balls out of the zone. She you talking about competitive at bat. She's struggling right now in the box. Yeah, I think she's just, you know, sometimes when you're in the box, you kind of just get in your head and sometimes the umpire contributes to that and you just start swinging at everything or start swinging at nothing and probably just one of those games for her and you know that always happens so kind of just gotta try to refocus and attack this is her 60th at bat on the season she's only had four hits and trying to trying to get some things going she does have 18 strikeouts on the season again three of those coming in this ball game but trying to work her way out of that here's the two two didn't help her cause any there. That's her fourth strikeout of the ball game. Ivy Rosemary just kind of expanding the zone and putting this one off the plate. You know, they, they've they seen Derry Berry chase a few pitches out of the zone. So good idea to put it out there and see if she'll swing. So down to their final at bat and great job out there by Anderson trying to track that one down went to a knee trying to slide over there but ball just a little too far away as Girardi the second baseman over two couple of strikeouts and a walk on the day. <laughs> and there's a called strike count 0 and 2. Missouri State has battled, but they're down to the last strike now, trailing at 9 to 3. Two gone, 0 2, two out in the top of the seventh. And that one inside, runner will advance. No third strike drop as it was a called strike. And so that's how this one will come to an end. It was not a thing of beauty, Rachel, obviously, but you know, they don't ask you to grade them, right? It's, it's, I know they're going to self reflect and know they got to play better against Texas, but they got the W and they didn't look.